Welcome back to the Open Source Summit North America 2025. My name is Paul Nashwardy and I'm covering the app dev space in all things open source. I'm joined today by Sean from KubeCost. Sean, how you doing? Doing well, Paul, how about yourself? Great, great, why don't you tell the audience a little bit about yourself and KubeCost, what you do? Sure, so I'm a solution engineer at KubeCost. I've uh, been here for going on four years now, been in the FinOps space for about a decade now, going from cloud cost to Kubernetes, kind of uh, peeling the layers of the onion back. Uh, we're here supporting Open Source Summit from a, a cloud perspective as well as open source. We have an open source project called OpenCost, which yeah. is a essentially the cost engine behind the KubeCost solution. Very cool, very cool. I mean, uh, financials, uh, you know, financials is a big part of uh, modernization projects. Uh, FinOps is a big part of it. I was just at FinOps X recently, a couple weeks back. Great conference. I mean, yeah, it was a great conference. It was fun, it was good to see all that coming together. Uh, that is, it's evolving though. Things are happening and changing uh, it quickly. Always, really. yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, and it's good. I mean, I think that when we look at modernization and we look at uh, you know, the challenges organizations run into, it's, it's always leading into things like, you know, uh, cost around that next generation. I talk in my practice, as the practice lead for app dev, I talk in my practice about past, present, future. And people are looking at moving off their heritage applications to more current state. Right. And But a lot of times these organizations, in my opinion, should be looking at uh, FinOps as a uh, like a precursor to that modernization effort. But in, in reality, they don't. They and, right. they and they almost have the like, oh no factor after the fact and go, <laughs> uh, we spent too much money. Right. right? So at that point, I, you know, what would you recommend for uh, for you know people to just kind of get started in this? You know, I, I think it's really important what you said that most people think about it after the fact, right? And in, in our experience, if you lay the groundwork ahead of time, you set yourself up to, for success much earlier in the game. Um, a lot of the times, the issues that we run into are people just don't know what they don't know, right? So right. they don't know about their infrastructure, they don't know their costs without some metadata to help them align their costs to different cost centers and business units. So, yeah, I agree. I, I think that, um, you know, initiatives will help educate the market, right. right? And we start looking at things like, you mentioned open source, uh, open cost, right? That's an open source approach to help educate the market on these types of things. Correct. Can you tell, tell the audience a little bit about that. Yeah, so I mean, open cost was originally designed uh, as a, a mo uh, an engine to help you understand from a Kubernetes perspective, what the cost of your containers are, right? Uh, from, if you think about the cloud providers, they're not interested in helping you understand the cost of a subset of a resource, right? They can tell you how much the virtual machine costs, how much the database costs, but not how much the transaction costs or like a, right. a piece of that cost. So open cost is meant to help kind of, you know, demystify that for the engineers to help them get more insight into the actual cost of the CPU to support their application or the GPUs to support their LLMs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, when you're thinking about uh, the different elements that that come with the financial impact of applications. You know, we look at uh, Kubernetes optimization and governance as a big factor too, right? Uh, I think that is, you know, like you can't, you can't not do some of the things, right. but you also, you want to do it in a way that's cost effective, so when you're doing it, you don't over provision. I mean, when I talk to the DevOps community, their business KPI is to, to get the code out the door, to get product out the door, right, and, and, and push. And a lot of times, you know, DevOps teams will over provision because right. they don't own the budget, right. right? And they just say, look, we need to get our job done, and you can't blame them because like, they're trying to get their KPIs done, but at the end of the day, the business is sometimes paying two, three, four hundred percent times more than they need to be right. paying. Right. Um, let's talk about that from an optimization perspective. You know, we, we look at Kubernetes optimization, you know, how do you optimize Kubernetes? Well, it's, it's a really good point because most of the engineers are more focused on performance rather than cost, right? They want to make sure that their application True. and the user experience is good, not necessarily that it's, you know, cheap or, or least expensive compared to their other infrastructure. Right. right. So when we talk about optimization, the biggest thing is understanding what their applications actually need from a resource perspective. And sure, there's a bunch of observability solutions out there, things like Grafana that will give them the insights they need to understand yeah. what they're consuming, but then the question would be like, well I see what I'm consuming, but what, what, what should I be using? What should my target be? So yeah. the algorithms and the, and the processes within KubeCost and OpenCost will help them understand like what a more reasonable amount of capacity would be for those workloads based on historical consumption. Yeah, well there's a difference between between understanding and seeing and then taking actionable insights, right. right? I mean, if you look at it and say, okay, well, hey, you're overspending or you're over-provisioning or you're overdoing, and you go, okay, it's still working, right? right? right. But it versus like that governance of saying, you know, like how do you govern those Kubernetes workloads? How do you look at it and go, okay, this workload, 
requires X, and, and you, know, you, can, you can be alerted to it, you get the right size that workload in order for it to be the most effective for your business. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, definitely right size the workloads. I mean, we, we find, we, we follow the, the FinOps approach, right, the whole crawl, walk, run, uh, when we talk about visibility as well as taking action. Uh, so we like, the first step is just the visibility, helping the engineers understand what the cost is or what the optimization routine would be, and then talking about like budgets, right? Like, am I exceeding my budget? Are the resources more than I should actually be spending? And then ultimately ending up at automation, right? Whether it be uh, just proactively right-sizing those resources as they get deployed, or even to a point where we prohibit or prevent resources from being deployed if they're going to exceed uh, a budget based on a forecast. Yeah, I agree with being proactive on these initiatives. That's what I was saying up front here. It's like when you're looking at modernization, you need to be proactive right. and look at it. That's ideal, right? But let's let's talk about like shifts and trends in the market. We're here at Open Source Summit, right? Um, you know, I, I'll look back at uh, four or five, four or five years ago when fin the first FinOps X kind of went out, to, you know, in market. I was there and I was like, okay, we were talking about sustainability right. and ESG and all the things around that. And it's like, okay, that was all good. And then this little thing called the AI popped up, yeah. right? And it's like, okay, well, sustainability out, out the, the door. window. <laughs> <laughs> and everything that you had to do is like now around like throwing as much resource as you can. Now that is not going to be the long-term game, right. Right? right? So I think that FinOps, the FinOps approach is pivoting to these AI ML workloads now and saying, okay, let's take a look at these AI workloads. What can we real realistically do to be most effective, not just throw every bit of dollars at it and not build the biggest data center in the world and then you know not have any power to run it. Right. What do we do? So right. what are your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy. If you ever look at like the, the retail, the market prices for GPUs, right? They're anywhere from a couple hundred bucks to twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars. Um, so the question always becomes like, are we using the right GPU for, for our workloads, right? Yeah. Uh, and then we'll, we'll focus on the efficiency of the GPUs, right? The power consumption, what's actually be consumed from like a wattage perspective and from a resource perspective. And then we'll help them make recommendations, whether that be to, to share the VP CPU, right? To our sorry, to, to share the GPU with other workloads or to, to re resize it, right? Maybe you're requesting multiple cores, but you actually only need one or your workload's not multi-threaded. So yeah, kind of so helping fractional them. GPU fractional you know, GPUs yeah, essentially, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so um, what would you recommend to the audience? I mean, you know, there's different audience members that are watching here that are going, okay, I'd love to do what you're doing. I've actually been tasked with doing a cost optimization. I don't even know how to get started. Right. Like, what does this mean? <laughs> like, I don't want to break the business because if I shut something off, I mean, sure, I can, me personally, I can go in and save any business a lot of money, shut everything off. Right. But they'll be out right. of business. Right, right, yeah, you won't so, have a very good product, yeah, so yeah for sure. So, so how do you get people going in this direction? Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, open costs will give you the visibility and just to kind of like understand what the cost of GPUs are, but when you talk about efficiency and optimization, a tool like KubeCost, right, the enterprise or paid offering, we do have a free tier, uh, will give you those insights and help you understand on a workload perspective how they're consuming and what changes can be made, whether it be changing the, the GPU type or the machine type to make better use of the, the different GPU capabilities that are out there. So, okay, that's a good, that's a good uh, kind of approach and to start. When I think of, uh, you know, uh, these different approaches, how do I know which approach is the right approach? Because there's like, you know, I think when I looked at, you know, FinOps X, there was 88, Vendors there, something like that. Something yeah, that was huge, right? And but I mean, I know that some things looking at rate, some things looking at utilization, some things looking at, and you know, like there's different things. If it's a little bit overwhelming, what what are some of the like the baselines that people can start with? Yeah, it's it's a good question because I think we're early enough, and like you said, we're we're at a kind of a tipping point with as, as much as the buzz is around AI that we're still kind of developing the processes that make sense. And I think each business unit, each team has a different approach to it. Um, so my, my recommendation would be to you know, see what's out in the market, see what makes sense based on what your goals are as a company, True. based on based on the workloads that you're deploying. Yeah, that's a fair response. I mean, I, I appreciate that. I think that I think that you know you meet the client where they are in their journey right. and, and you know understand how they're how they're achieving it. What are some of the like the, I would call it the tips and tricks you, you can share with the audience <laughs> and say like, hey, this is what I could get, like, you know, offer up. Yeah, I mean, tips and tricks are tough too because like uh, a lot of the problems right now are, are availability of the resources, right? There's a lot of like regions in AWS where you don't have availability for that. So a lot of people we see are actually using the resources that are just available to them. May not be the right ones for the workloads that they need, but it's kind of all they can, they can get right now. Sure. Um, tips and tricks. Um, one of the biggest things we run into in Kubernetes, maybe not necessarily specific to GPUs, is not setting requests and limits on your workloads, right? Okay. So when you deploy things to Kubernetes, if the control plane doesn't know what you from need from a resource perspective, you can run into performance issues that can ultimately lead okay. to, to a run on cost. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, would that be applied, would you say something different for pitfalls? 
Uh, yeah, maybe not giving much capacity uh, to the workloads, but I think uh, the important part here is governance, is basically governance, yeah. setting the guardrails to ensure that people are actually adhering to what they should be when they're deploying their workloads. Very, very true. So if we're here a, a year from now, when, when we're sitting here, we're having this conversation at the next Open Source Summit, where do you see the market going? What do you see, what would you want to see happen in FinOps and, mm. and, and, and what I, would be the I, I, I'd certainly like to take a, take a step back to go back to sustainability because I think it's important that we, we continue on that path, especially with AI because we've seen the power consumption go through the roof, yeah. right? They're spinning up nuclear power plants in order to support these GPU workloads and we're kind of removing our focus on sustainability. So I'm hoping we kind of get back to that. Yeah, I think, I think you're right. I think we're going to, we're going to have to normalize that, right? Once we normalize and harmonize what we're actually using these resources for, right. that's going to help dictate the financial spend. But, yeah. but this has been great. I mean, I really do appreciate your time today. This is, uh, you know, there's a lot going on. Final word to the audience. Oh man, um, I mean, specific to open source, there's a lot of really cool solutions out here today. I've taken a uh, walk around, there's a lot of stuff around AI and LLMs and then being more efficient with that. Um, and then you see open source right here, they've got a really cool solution, so I'd say, see what's in the market, you know, take a step back, understand what solutions are there and find what fits you best. Very cool, very cool. Thank you for your time today. I really appreciate your insights. It really is uh, important to share this with the, with the larger audience. And I, I want to thank you for watching today. My name is Paul Nashawad and I'm coming to you live from the show floor at Open Source Summit. North America 2025, and thank you for watching theCUBE, the leading source in tech news.